please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. A very good morning and welcome to the Tracks for Africa YouTube channel. This episode is going to be a really interesting one. We're in the first weeks of June and of course there's been a lot of rain in the Western Cape and um, we've decided to create uh, one episode that's dedicated to what I like to call the mega route. Now we looked at all the interesting places to ride adventure motorcycles and drive 4x4s and if you think of the most incredible locations for these activities you're looking at places like Bavians Kloof, um, Hamkas Kloof, otherwise known as Dihel, and the Atikwas Kloof, with these old historical ox wagon trails. These are incredible areas for, for adventuring. The off-road is absolutely insane. Multiple mountain passes, whether you're in a 4x4 or an adventure bike, these three locations are always known as the bucket list locations. So what we've decided to do is join them all into one route, the mega route, and put them into this incredible, exciting episode. So we've had the vehicle a little bit upgraded again. I've added on the snorkel now as well. We had the front and rear diff breather kit installed and the snorkel at Jimny Works SA in Brackenfell. And uh, we're ready for the wet season now because we will definitely come across river crossings and Bavians that are gonna have 20, 30, maybe 40 centimeters of water. And there's lots and lots of rain been happening in the last few days. Today we're leaving Montague, which is pretty much where the route's gonna start. And we're heading right down the Langeberg mountain range into the Atakwas Cliff and the old historical ox wagon trail. The roads are washed away and stony, there's multiple stream crossings, but the landscape is just absolutely incredible. We've been visiting Bonnydale Holiday Farm in the Atakwas Cliff for more than 10 years with adventure motorcycles and adventure motorcycle tours. I've been through there a few times in a four-wheel drive as well and it's just the most incredible scenery. So that's our route today, we're going to be leaving Montague soon and going straight through to Barrydale and then we'll pick up the gravel through Brunt Fier and hit the Langeberg mountain range all the way to the top of Klutus Pass and that's where we pick up the old ox wagon trail that runs through the Atakwas Kloof. Now the last section of the Atakwas Kloof ox wagon trail has been closed for a number of years. Um, that takes you out up into Robinson Pass that is that has been closed but we're going to follow the Bonnydale Holiday Farm Road right back until we meet the tar of the R328 and then we're going into De Hell. And after that, we're going straight into Bavian's Cliff, and that's where things really start getting exciting. Strictly speaking, the best time of year to do this mega route would be the dry season from November to May. Bonnydale Holiday Farm in the Atakwas Kloof is definitely one of many adventure bikers and 4x4 enthusiast weekend getaway destinations. With many campsites, a 16 sleeper chalet and an incredibly scenic dam offering a host of summer activities. The first documented traveller through the Kloof was Enzyn Isaac Schreiber, sent by Simon von der Stel. He travelled with 12 ox wagons in 1689 and took a laborious seven days to traverse the 54 km Atakwas Kloof. He was shown the route by the Khorikwa Khoi Khoi, which was originally used by migrating elephants due to its low gradient. A toll house on Bonnydale Farm recorded that 4,285 ox wagons passed through in the year 1843. 
The Atacuas remained the main route east for 180 years until the Robinson Pass was built in 1865. The Atacuas Cliff Oxwagon Trail became part of Cape Nature and was declared a national monument in 1995. It is unfortunate that Cape Nature closed the east end of the Oxwagon Trail leading to the R328 on Robinson Pass, but nonetheless we can still enjoy most of it today. It's a wonderful chilly morning on Bonnydale Holiday Farm. We're still in the Atacuas and yesterday we spent uh, quite a bit of time exploring the farm. We wanted to do the actual Atacuas Oxwagon Pass, but um, unfortunately because of all the rain the river levels are very high and the first part of the Atacuas Kloof Pass actually goes through the riverbed for about 200 meters before then starting to climb up the pass. And unfortunately it was very silted up and just looked like I couldn't, you know, one couldn't even walk in there. So we weren't able to do that at all. But you can do the Atacuas Pass on Bonnydale Farm when the river levels are, are a bit lower. Um, we did it probably two years ago um, in our Land Cruiser Prado. So here's some of that footage. Whilst exploring the Atacuas Kloof, we travelled through a pine forest and something magic caught my eye. So Craig and I are out filming. It's our first morning at Bonnydale Holiday Farm and we've taken this beautiful, beautiful broad jeep track through a pine forest. And Craig was looking around and he happened to see a whole bunch of mushrooms. Mushroom foraging is something that Chris and I have been doing for a number of years. And um, it's pretty much every season in winter, when, when the first rains start coming, May, June and July, right through to about August. You know, these mushrooms are often so camouflaged. And look at this, look at this. Now one has to be very careful with all these little stalks about to not damage the mushroom. I mean, really now. <laughs> look at that. Isn't it beautiful? I look down and there is an even more beautiful pine and look at that. Look at how big it is. I mean the diameter of it is probably what about 10 centimeters. Look at that. I mean it's perfect. That's our haul and probably too much for one meal but anyway we're gonna I'm going to cook it tonight. I'm going to make a lovely ever with fried pine ring mushroom salad and the rest we'll have for breakfast tomorrow. As most people will know, mushrooms should never be washed. So just dust it off with a damp paper towel or a little brush just to get the excess dirt off. All I'm going to do is just chop off the ends. Um, because they have gone a little bit brown and then I'm just going to slice them really roughly. Unfortunately this is the biggest pan that we have so I'm having to move them around quite carefully until they shrink a bit and then they can start frying properly. These insane smells start wafting up from the pan, there just is simply nothing like it. Sadly, it was time to leave Bonnydale Farm and the Atacuas Kloof and head towards Oatshorn up the R328 on Robinson Pass, then up Swartberg Pass and into Hamkas Kloof. We had called ahead to the guest house, but there was no certainty if we could even get there due to massive road damage and high water levels in Dehel from recent hard rains. 
So our plan was just to drive in and out of Hamkaskluf as far as we could and then overnight in Prince Albert. Kamkaskloof Road was totally destroyed from the rain, and our average speed was not more than 10 km per hour. It was not going to be easy to reach the top of Irlands Pass and back to Prince Albert before dark. Well, we are on the Kamkaskloof Road. Um, the conditions are appalling. As you'll see from some of the footage, the road has been washed away to nothing but bedrock. Um, and it's taken us exactly an hour to do 10 kilometers. Now the route is 37 kilometers to De Hell. What we thought we'd do is get to the top of Elans Pass, uh, shoot some drone footage and then head out. Unfortunately, if it's taken us an hour to do 10 kilometers, um, I was looking at the big pass there that will take us up to the top of Elans Pass and that would be probably another hour and a half away. And we don't even know the conditions of the road um, and there is a very deep stream crossing right before that pass. So we have a bit of a dilemma because if we carry on, um, it's going to be at least another two hours before we can get to Elans Pass. And then that means it's going to be at least three to probably four hours, double the time usually, to get out back to Swartberg Pass. And that would put us at about eight o'clock at night. Kamkaskloof is a favourite amongst adventure bikers and mostly done in the dry season between November and May. There are multiple stream crossings at the bottom of the hell and in wet season there's no guarantee you can get through them on a motorcycle. In a 4x4 it might be a little bit easier. As we know from overlanding, it's always better to play it safe rather than damage your vehicle and end up in a location with no cell phone reception after dark, especially if you're driving alone. So we turned around and headed out of Hamkaskloof, down Swartberg Pass and into Prince Albert for the night. Departing Prince Albert on a grey and clement morning, we travelled along the R407 Tar Road to Klaastroom, then took the R407 Gravel Road to Wollemore. This road can be a gamble in wet season due to the Trocker River, 56 kilometres from Klaastroom, often being in flood, but we called ahead to the engine garage in Wollemore and they said the road was open. The Traka River Drift is extremely low and even in the dry season it can be silted up with thick sand which can be hazardous for bikers. After refueling in Wollemore we took the R332 southeast for 30 kilometers to Neverkloof Pass and into the Babianskloof Nature Reserve area. We 
had booked two nights at one of our favorite locations in Bavian's Kloof, the Spearcoat Treehouse. The Spearcoat Farm is located 18 kilometers from the beginning of the Neverkloof Pass. The surrounding mountains include spectacular hiking trails that start and end on the Spearcoat Farm. The accommodation is separated into three main cottages set well apart from each other. The five-sleeper Klein Karoo Cortes, the secluded five-sleeper Clipspringer Cottage, and the fairy tale six-sleeper Spearcoat Treehouse, which is where we chose to put our heads down for two nights. The treehouse is truly magical and has two bedrooms, the main with a fireplace, an outdoor shower, fully equipped kitchen and a large braai area downstairs with a summer splash pool. Then there is also the Kudu bush camp with hot showers and braai facilities. Eventually the weather cleared up so Kirsten and I went to explore part of Crocodile hiking trail to shake off a bit of our cabin fever. massive rock behind me is the crocodile rock. You'll see it from a distance, it actually looks like a crocodile lying down with its chin up on top of the rock. So there's a hike that goes right around the back of crocodile rock, right the way around the entire valley, joins up with another hike called oral paper that then comes back down into the valley. Um, we were planning on doing it but uh, I've been sick for the last week and I just really don't have it in my lungs. Time has come for what we believe is the most spectacular part of this journey, traversing the Bavianskloof wilderness area. 80% of Bavianskloof is a variety of agriculture, mostly citrus, and from the west gate to the east gate is only 54 kilometers, but this is where all the adventure happens. To traverse the entire Bavianskloof from Neverkloof Pass to Potensi is 164 kilometers and will take a minimum of four and a half to five hours and you will need a four-wheel drive with high clearance. The entire kloof has over 78 crossings over the Bavians Kloof River, with probably 20 of them having water to cross. In the wet season, water depth may vary from 5 cm to 80 cm or more, depending on rain levels. This is why for adventure bikers, the best time to cross Bavians Kloof successfully is between November and May in the dry season. You don't want a flooded bike in the middle of Bavians. There is mostly no cell phone reception and no fuel between Willowmore and Potensi. We've just passed now through the Western Gate and um, this is where the true Bavians really starts. Um, uh, this gate is 105 kilometers or so from Willowmore. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, crystal clear. The water levels apparently in Bavians are not too serious. Smithcarl apparently is one continuous water, which it generally is this time of year. And it's a lot safer to do an adventure bikes in the dry months. In the wet months, of course, four by fours we can get through. And if, if it's really deep water, then you've got to have a snorkel. And if it's too deep, they generally close uh, the kloof. So we're gonna head in and let's see how it goes. Most of the water crossings in Bavians are relatively shallow. In the dry season, the water is not much deeper than 15 centimeters, even at its deepest crossing. Caution should be taken, especially by adventure bikers, as some of the crossings like Smitskral have many slippery rocks, even in dry season. 
On our trip through Smitskroll, it was about 100 meters of continuous water and easily over 50 centimeters at its deepest. Five major mountain passes in Babiansklif on the R332. The Nevekluf Pass on the western side, Grasnek, Langkop, Holgat, and Kombrings Pass on the eastern side. Holgat Pass is particularly difficult due to the concrete strips having broken up over the years, creating sharp 10 cm high edges and making it difficult to stay on the two spore tracks, especially if traveling from west to east and ascending Holgat Pass. After Kombrings Pass, the R332 flattens out towards the East Gate. The gravel road passes through a highly productive citrus region to Potensi. We continued on through Utenhaeg to Addo for a two-night stay at Rosedale Organic Farm, allowing us a full day to visit Addo Elephant Park the next day. A fine morning today. It's Sunday and uh, we're heading off to Addo Elephant Park for the day. Let's hope this time that we can see some kind of cats. You know, we've done... Uh, four nights in Khalakhadi and five nights in Natasha and two nights in Karoo National Park and we still haven't seen any cats anywhere. So it is quite doubtful if we'll see lions in Addo because there are apparently only five of them. So, you know, and it's quite a big park and as we know, lions are not easy to see. But in any case, Addo has always delivered. Every time I've been to Addo, it's always delivered incredible elephant footage and other antelope footage, but mainly elephant footage. Now in summer, when it's hot, you get a lot of incredibly good sightings and footage at, at, at the main water holes. And those water holes are like Harpur, Roydam, and Khwari. These are the water holes where you get the most incredible elephant footage. However, in winter, because there's such a lot of water out in the park, the animals generally don't come to the water holes, especially the elephants. They will just drink from a dirty puddle in the bush rather than walk a few kilometers to a water hole. So water hole sightings are a lot less common in winter than in summer. Nonetheless, it's a beautiful day and we hope to get some stunning footage of elephants and other stuff and hopefully see some cats. Although I'm a bit doubtful, but we'll see anyway. You never know. These are national parks and sometimes you do see good stuff. So we believe that all the animals migrate down to the southern part of the park. So we're going to go straight in past the few main water holes just to check and then we'll make our way right down to the south part of the park and explore the various loops that are there to see what we can find.
Our time spent in Addo Elephant Park was a wonderful way to round off our epic adventure. We didn't see any big cats in the park other than this roy cut, but such is wildlife. So as this wonderful trip of the three cliffs draws to a close, Craig and I would really like to thank all of you for following us on the last five episodes. I must say of all the travels that we've done thus far in this year, I think the three cliffs for me personally falls within the top three. It has been an incredible adventure, um, both from an adventure point of view and, and scenically as well. And there's real merit in going into these remote areas and discovering the most, most beautiful parts of this country. Craig's going to tell you now about how we are going to be spending the next couple of months and how we will resume with a mini-series when we kick off again. Yes, thank you, Kirsten. Um, and I want to thank everybody as well for joining us on this mini-series journey. Um, it's been absolutely incredible. From the Cedarburg to the Cape to Atosha routes and discovering the parts of Namibia that we haven't been to, it's really been an amazing journey and um, it's been fantastic for, for us to travel and to share our travels with you. Now, we're going to end this first season off now with the first five parts. Um, the weather in the Western Cape area is not great at the moment, although today we've got a sunny day. But um, we're going to give it a break until spring and then um, we're going to start off with season two, another five or perhaps six episodes. And we're going to start the series off with a beautiful trip up to the West Coast in Rechtersfeld. And we're going to put a list of the proposed episodes in the description below this video. But um, join us in spring where we kick off with a new season and a whole new series of episodes traveling around South Africa using the Tracks of Africa products for navigation, specifically the guide app. There's a fantastic amount of uh, information on the guide app. So thank you for joining us on this mini series and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.